The Department of Anthropology at the University of Colorado Denver has uh, 10 faculty members uh, who represent the subdisciplines of archaeology, biological anthropology, and cultural anthropology. Our department approaches student engagement by getting students involved uh, very early on in investing in their own success. Uh, so, for example, we try to get undergraduate students as well as graduate students involved in our research programs, in uh, our community involvement, and, uh, and, and the kinds of activities that will really leave a mark on their life. The faculty at UC Denver has done a really tremendous job of working with students and helping them take their research project to the next level. And they're always available and help the student get into the data and actually enter the communities. Although I've worked closely with my advisor to form my individual project and he's provided plenty of guidance and assistance so that I can really make the most of my time while I'm in the department. You know, one thing that really attracted me to this department was their level of engagement and how they prioritize that. Really helping students get into the communities so that we can impact change. The only way anthropology is effective is when it acts as a vehicle to push change. My research examines the health inequalities of migrant farm workers in the United States, uh, and I'm interested in new dimensions of vulnerability among migrant farm workers. I've involved my students in my research by taking them to the field with me, both to California Central Valley to interview migrant farm workers, as well as to the U.S.-Mexico border to interview Americans seeking care across borders. I think one of the main strengths of the program for students who are interested in studying health and the environment is that Denver has a vibrant health industry. We can place students locally in health research and in nonprofits. We have a master's program where students are able to be directly engaged in research because they're not competing with PhD students. My research relates most strongly to the department's focus on the environment in that I try to situate recent human evolution between about 50 and 45,000 years ago to the environmental context in which it unfolded and I also try to understand how people, even when we were still hunter-gatherers, were modifying their environments to make it a better place for their evolutionary success. And so every summer I'm in the field and I take students with me and I make the data that we gather in the field available for them to use as part of theses and projects that they might want to present at conferences and I also use some of this information as part of projects and papers that we publish jointly. First of all, we're training people to think critically about what it means to be human. And that's a skill that you can apply pretty much anywhere. So we prepare them for graduate studies. We have a number of students that have gone on to fairly prestigious PhD programs and put these skills to good use as well. I use evolutionary theory to study health uh, in my work that takes place in the island nation of Papua New Guinea, where I study the health mostly of mothers and their children. We know that uh, repeated rounds of reproduction among women, and particularly when their births are spaced very closely together, result in a shortened longevity and also uh, more morbidity or illness among the women, and I study those trade-offs. My primary view on undergraduate education is that we need to instill in undergraduates what I would call transferable skills. So rather than just conveying to them the content of biological anthropology and evolutionary theory, I try and promote uh, skills such as critical thinking, civic-mindedness, and understanding of the trade-offs that individuals make between their own good and the goods of society. And those are skills that I think are transferable to undergraduates who will go on in business, in politics, in medicine and nursing, and a wide range of fields. Cultural anthropology is a vehicle to promote social justice, and so anthropologists, I think, especially myself, my, my students, are playing a key role in understanding how to influence policy. One of my favorite digital storytelling research projects is working with Florence Crittenden High School. It's a Ford Foundation funded project where I'm working with a number of professors in the University of Colorado Denver and the high school, specifically 30 young women, to produce digital 
digital stories about their access to healthcare and dealing with stigma. And the purpose of that project is to build leadership skills, but also to use the digital stories to influence health policy that affects teens. One of the community-driven projects I'm working on is with tobacco farm workers in Malawi, which is in Central Africa. So in partnership with the Union of Tobacco Farm Workers, I work with people to try to identify the different strategies people have to exit tobacco farming. And the goal of that project is to understand community needs, especially food sovereignty issues, but also ways uh, farmers could earn a fair wage for their work and to address some of the exploitative practices of U.S tobacco companies. So anthropologists and the discipline itself has a long track record of doing effective interventions and so my job is to create space for students but also in my, for my own self to try to identify measurable ways to see that change uh, using anthropology. Our faculty agree that a valuable master's degree in anthropology is one that combines uh, both being a scholar but being a practitioner as well. They need to be able to get a job but also to make that job better.